Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for the Regional Elevator Lab Challenge Finals. So Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro and Slovenia, all part of Elevator Lab, a, an international partnership program powered by Raiffeisen Bank International. So it's all about finding the, the best B2B fintech startups within the region and then finding them, showcasing them, but also nurturing them so that they can scale up and, uh, and that, that real stepping stone to uh, international success. So already, already, we have had three different local competitions in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro, Serbia and Croatia. The three winners of those uh, local competitions, each won themselves 5,000 euros in cash and they also had an opportunity to pilot their project pilot their project with a, a local bank also the possibility to have more conversations and uh, present their solutions to uh, board um, at board meetings of uh, of the local at Raiffeisen and banks as well and more importantly they are here today to compete against each other a local battle as it were competing against each other to walk away the winner of the elevator lab challenge finals so what's at stake we know what they've won but after being a winner today what will they actually walk away with the winner will walk away once again with another 5,000 euros in cash as a cash prize. Also, a chance to have more conversations, more meetings with senior managers from Raiffeisen Bank and Raiffeisen Bank International. An opportunity to integrate their innovation, to actually implement their, their idea, their big idea, into Raiffeisen Group's banking systems, which actually reaches more than 1.7 million clients and uh, naturally intensive media co coverage as well. They get training to present their ideas to, uh, to business clients as well and, and also a chance to pitch their idea at the International Elevator Lab Demo Day in 2021 in front of uh, distinguished representatives and the entire Raiffeisen Bank International Group. So as you can hear, a, a lot to play for, a lot at stake. And again, I'm intrigued as much as you are really to, to hear these pitches, hear these big ideas and uh, really find out who's going to walk away a winner a little bit later on. At this stage right now, I'd uh, like to introduce the jury members, the people that will decide the fate of the lucky winner here on, on the stage today. But first, first of all, one of those jury members i like to uh, invite here to the stage in person, and that is the Director of Digital Book Products from Raiffeisen Bank, Croatia, Mr. Marko Ladika. Hello, Peter. Hi, uh, thank you for your welcome and thanks uh, everyone for having us here this year. Uh, you have done a, a tremendous job of announcing the Elevator Lab and what is it about. I should just briefly add that uh, we are going strong from 2017 and also uh, we have more than 10 startups with a long-lasting cooperation between the Raiffeisen Bank and themselves. And of course, the last, last year's uh, competitor has also given an opportunity to pilot the project in the Raiffeisen Bank and the cooperation is still going strong. So there is a lot at stake of today's competition. Fantastic. Right. What we'll do now, we'll meet, let's meet the other jury members who are not with us here in person, but they are beaming through the screen right now. So let's uh, invite the uh, jury members to, uh, to join us right now. So CEO of Iniciativa Digitalna Serbia, Nebojša Djurjevic. Are you there? Are you there, Nebojša? Nebojša. Yes, hello everyone. Let's Pleasure to- him coming. Yeah, <laughs> just waiting. Hi, welcome. Hi, Nebojša. Fantastic. We also have, we also have Maya Miljevac, Head of Startup Enablement at Maestro Solutions. Hi, Miljeva, welcome. Okay, we can't hear you, but we can see you. Fantastic. We also have Head of Digital Banking Center at Raiffeisen Bank Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kenan Karcic. Hello. Hi. We, we got, uh, got uh, guys from Sarajevo. 
we can hear you. you. We can hear you loud and clear. Absolutely. We, we now have also Deputy Chairman of the Managing Board at Raiffeisen Bank Serbia, Petar Jovanovic. Hi, Petar. Hi, guys. Welcome. How are you? Fantastic. And also Senior Strategy, Strategic Partnerships and Ecosystems Manager at Raiffeisen Bank, Istvan Kovac. Good morning, Zagreb. Good evening, Singapore. Hello. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Hear and good night to Tokyo. Right, we now have all our jury members ready and waiting. I'm sure, again, you're intrigued to really hear what these three pitches really have to offer. Just to give you the, uh, the drill of how this is going to unfold, it's very simple and uh, not complicated at all. Each pitch, each startup will have five minutes they share their big idea for five minutes no more maybe less but it's five minutes sharing their big idea after that five minutes we then dig a little bit deeper the jury members will then ask questions and dig a little bit deeper under the bonnet to really find out what's making this startup tick and uh, and that will go on uh, for about 10 minutes okay so up to 10 minutes for question and answer and five minutes to sh actually share their big idea okay i think we're ready what do you think we, are we ready we are ready Absolutely. yeah people we... here you're ready and those of you that are beaming in uh, from wherever you are around the world i'm sure you're ready too so without further ado let's start with our first pitch of the elevator lab uh, challenge finals and that is Sergeant stefan kostic from serbia with epification Hello everybody, we are delighted to be here in the regional finals. I'm Stefan, I'm the CEO of IPification, the company that revolutionized the way of how we authenticate our mobile devices. We are all familiar with SMS one-time codes problems. They interrupt the user experience, they don't arrive often, but most importantly they are insecure and prone to SIM swap attacks and many other security loopholes because SMS was never intended to be used for this purpose. Good news is that we have already started commercializing the patented solution called Ipification and achieved great results this year, but way bigger expansion is expected in 2021. So what's the magic trick of multiplying our revenues 20 times in only one year? First of all, a very solid telecom network footprint that we've established in the last three years of hard work. There are 24 telecom operators live in 11 markets, enabling over 350 million subscribers with our technology. And that's just the beginning, because there's close to 50 more telecoms starting to go live in 2021. Secondly, we signed agreements with already entrenched market players that are ranging from a platform provider such as Microsoft, big A2P SMS aggregators, payment providers, fraud and identity companies, that already established a big ecosystem of merchants who are using this type of uh, verification and technologies. So they are using our technology as a backbone to satisfy their customers' mobile authentication needs. Third, and most importantly, our telecom-based mobile authentication solution is unique. It's a super strong possession factor verification, and it's the only market solution that is able to verify three most important network elements phone number, SIM card number, and device number in a single click based on the user's IP address. All the other solution that depends on SMS or header enrichment are unfortunately already crippled and deprecated, and as such, they have a shelf life. You can see an example of a very popular platform in Serbia who integrated this solution recently, where the user just inputs the phone number and click verify. No need for SMS, no need for voice call, everything is verified seamlessly in a single click based on the user's IP address. I would like to use this uh, occasion also to show um, one banking use case we are developing with one, uh, with one international bank for uh, additional verification for online transactions. As we all know, the banks have the, the, the phone number of the user in their database as a standard uh, piece of information for digital or, or physical onboarding. And whenever the user is buying, I don't know, the airline tickets, uh, paying anything on the e-commerce online with credit or debit cards, they have additional verification methods in place 
which mostly re resides around the hardware token verification or uh, uh, soft SIMs in the, the mobile banking application, but the most common one is SMS one-time PINs. So the bank is adding the QR code verification as a, as a much more user-friendly option and much more secure. So the only thing the customer needs to do is just scanning the QR code as I'm doing here with their camera, uh, and that's it. There is no need for an app and transactions is, uh, is uh, seamlessly verified online. Um, on the, the mobile, uh, on the mobile uh, app side, the, the, basically the verification is, is seamless with, uh, with one click without any, any scanning of the QR code. Identification will become the norm in the field, which is important not only for us as a company, but for the entire digital ecosystem. As you can see here on the right side, our efforts have been recognized by some of the biggest global awards in the space. We have assembled a highly experienced international team that all share the same vision that next generation mobile authentication must be secure, it must be frictionless, and it must protect the end user data and privacy. So please join us to make this vision a reality and revolutionize the mobile authentication space together. So thanks a lot for your attention and uh, looking forward to the Q&A session coming up very soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. So there we have it. There we have it. Implification, the first startup, setting the tone of this competition. What happens now is we, again, we jump back to our jury members and they have a chance now to ask uh, questions as much as they like, digging a little bit deeper underneath that bonnet to find out really what, uh, what makes Implification tick. So let's uh, jump back to our jury members. They're coming through. There you are. Fantastic. And uh, Stefan, hi, at the bottom. Can you hear me? <laughs> Raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, we just need the sound here on Maybe stage. Same problem as we are. Uh, but leveraging on the existing technologies that are already deprecated on the telecom side. So they, they use uh, what I mentioned, Heather Enrichment, which has been there for more than 20 years or so. And unfortunately, it's becoming deprecated because this technology was meant to be used only on HTTP protocol, which is already, you know, a, a history for many websites and many, uh, many security companies nowadays. So naturally, these companies are also becoming uh, kind of our partners on the connectivity side, as I mentioned. So they are using basically the connections we establish on, on the telecom side um, and, and basically resell this service to, to, to their clients. So in terms of, um, you know, deploying the, the platform on the operator side, we are, we are pretty much unique uh, on the market at the moment. Okay, thank you. If I may ask, uh, I guess it's related. First of all, Stefan, great presentation, really a good pitch. So thank you for thank that. You. Thank you, um, in, uh, I, I read the briefing, so I, I understand what you're saying yeah. with respect to the competitive landscape, but how do you ensure that sustainable competitive uh, advantage? Because this looks so slick, it solves the real problem. And yeah. I think there will be a bunch of people looking at copying. So you mentioned a patent. Now, yeah. what's your sustainable competitive advantage strategy and how do you protect it? Well, uh, as, as you said, I mean, we, we've, we've done our share of work of patenting the, the, the platform, the, the GMID box side where the magic happens on the operator side in five countries, including US and UK. Um, but, um, I mean, the, the very nature of the business is kind of... Uh, making it hard for the other guys to jump in. We all know how hard is working with telecom operators, right? Like the first deal we needed to make, it took us, it took us one year to get one telco. Luckily it goes exponentially. You know, now when you start with the references, when you have 24 operators, then it's way much easier, uh, you know, but if someone wants to start today and do the same thing as we are, uh, they definitely need to go through all the hurdles and, and know-hows and, and, you know, learning curves as, as, as we did. And uh, that's kind of, you know, not, not motivating for, for many players. And, and especially even including these A2P SMS providers uh, and payment providers who are already in the telco space, um, they, prefer, they prefer having someone else uh, 
uh, do the painful job and, and put the backbone there if, if they can use it, you know, for a, for a small share of, of their revenues. Okay, so if I may just uh, ask, so that was the first part. So you are saying you are first in, you will get the relationships, you will get the scale and first mover advantage. So what's the patent? Is the patent issued? Is it granted? And it's, what does it protect? How, how strong is that? Yeah, it's, it's granted. It's granted in, in two countries. It's already granted in the US uh, and Hong Kong, in, uh, in UK, uh, in China uh, is, is pending. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the patent is protecting exactly what, what I mentioned is our core. We are the only solution that is able to verify three network elements, what the telecoms are calling network triplet, you know, SIM card device and phone number based on the public IP address that's assigned by your uh, telecom network provider. Okay, thank so, you. Uh, that's that's the, the core core point of the bet. Yeah. Got it, thank you. May I go next one? Yeah. Okay, uh, the, the, the question is, uh, I understood that you, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I understood that you have a, that you established a relationship with the tel telco operators across the world. Um, do you have any any references or use case uh, already implemented within the banks and maybe just measure? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, telcos are just the strategic partners because they're, they're necessary, uh, you know, players to have our solution working. On the banking side, um, as I mentioned before, I mean, we directly haven't signed the deals with, with the banks. Uh, we have a couple of... Uh, uh, fintechs and e-wallets in Asia, but our clients, I mean, our, as I said, channel partners, they are already using our technology for some of the of the biggest banks. I mean, the biggest bank in UK, um, in Spain, for example, uh, BBVA, if you are familiar, they they are leveraging on on our on our telecom network connections, um, you know, via via our channel partners. So we are basically a backbone connectivity provider. Uh, but they have a direct agreement with the uh, with the guys that I mentioned in the presentation. Yeah. And just a question from my side: What do you see the best and the biggest use case with the banking industry? Um, well, I mean, uh, there, there are many use cases. I mean, the standard one is the remote phone number verification, which we are all familiar with. I mean, uh, especially in in Asia, but we can see the trend coming in in Europe as well. There are these neo banks where, where there's no more brick and mortar kind of uh, physical places for the customers to come in and to verify whatever the piece of identity they, they need. And the phone number, I think we all agree, is, is, is very crucial for any fintech, especially, especially for the banks. So one case is during the user onboarding, um, then definitely during transaction confirmation as well. As, uh, as, as I've shown, no matter it's a, it's a desktop or, or a web confirmation or a mobile, uh, mobile app confirmation, we think that it's necessary to always be on the, on the lookout and on a potential you know, fraud alerts because uh, SIM swap attacks started to, to grow in Europe as well. Uh, I, I'm sure you are all familiar as well. And, and this is one of the solutions that is able to protect it without jeopardizing the user experience. That, that's a very important uh, piece of the element because yeah. you can check this API every time you want to, to, to check whenever something, something sensitive happens without asking the user anything. Because and the prerequisite for this use case would not be an installation of uh, some additional application, but as I understand, you're doing it purely on the protocol level. And with the QR correct, code. Correct, correct. There is no need for an app. There is no need for anything on the user side to do it. As the, the moment the telecom operator goes live with our technology, basically all their subscribers are enabled from uh, from the first day to, to use this uh, this verification. Okay, we've got one, one question. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Maybe it's a quick one related to that. You mentioned you're um, present in 11 markets with TACO. Uh, which markets would that be? And especially, I'm interested, which of the CEE, Central Eastern European markets, you would be present? Thank you. Yeah, uh, we, we, started, we started from Asia, right? Like we, we started from, uh, you know, Hong Kong and the, the, the North APAC region. We deployed a solution in three countries in Southeast Asia. We have two countries in Middle East, you know, Kuwait and Iraq. And now, you know, during, uh, during COVID time, we intensify our presence in, uh, in Europe because a lot, of, uh, a lot of our team members are, are actually from, from these regions. So in CE region, 
we have deployments with two operators in Serbia. Uh, two operators are finalizing deployments in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Montenegro, uh, the biggest operator deployed there. Um, and in Croatia, uh, we have one operator uh, that, are, that are currently deploying the solution as well as part of their group deal. So um, hopefully, you know, by, by Q1 next year, we will have, uh, we expect to have, you know, Serbia, Serbia fully covered. Um, you know, having Telenor joined as well, and, um, and and hopefully all the other countries in the regions as well, pretty much, uh, pretty much covered. Yeah, no question, please. Um, I cannot hear. Maybe it's a it's a sound. Oh, yeah, issue. yeah. Okay. So, uh, how do you and sell? How do you implement in the market? So, let's say you sign up the telco. So, what's your sale? Like, who is the end customer? You mentioned merchants or or the bank. Like, what's the model? Yeah, the model, the model is straightforward. You know, in order to speed up deployments, we come to the operator with a present like, look, this is the platform. Uh, we are providing you basically free of charge. The whole installation takes, uh, you know, eight minutes uh, in, in, in real time, actually, what their network engineer needs to do. And we promise them basically a, a new revenue revenue stream coming in straight, straight away, you know, on the other side. So basically, we are charging, we are charging the uh, authentication for uh, the merchant slash service provider. It's either fintech, banking, um, you know, OTT players, e-commerce, whoever wants to verify the phone number, they pay for, for each authentication. Similar how to do you reach them? What's your sales channel? So you sign up the telco, that's relatively easy. There are, you know, three to five telcos in the market. How do you go after merchants, banks and others? Yeah, that, that's the hard part for us. But like the, 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 the channel partners, as I said, I mean, uh, a lot of them, for example, in, in, in Serbia, we, we've signed up already 20, 20 plus applications after cargo went live. But we, I mean, on a global scale, we realize we can't go and chase uh, all the end merchants, you know, all the Facebooks, WhatsApps of the world. So that's why we decide, okay, let's partner with already established market players, you know, such as uh, Cinches, Twilio's, Infobips of the world, who already work with them on the SMS side. You have payment companies such as Boku, etc., who signed up these deals on the payment side. You have uh, GBG, Microsoft, who are providing them already software in some, some other areas. So these guys are actually our channel partners, and application is, is already enabled through them. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to just we, stop we you there. Them to deliver the, the, the traffic. Yeah, I'm just going to stop you there, only just because we need to make this as fair and square as possible for everybody. So there we have it, our first pitch of the competition again very uh, intriguing indeed giving you a flavor and setting the tone of really what's to come as well so thank you so much uh, thank Stefan you. Kosic. Thanks, for, for all the Fantastic. questions thanks Vlad. thank you okay so again we want to make this as interactive and engaging as possible so again you you're listening to this at home at work wherever you are in the world you hear something you like you'd like to challenge perhaps the, uh, the startups with their idea in the chat on the different uh, live streaming platforms on YouTube, wherever you're watching, uh, put in the chat where you're from and, and perhaps a question. Or maybe within your network, you know someone that can actually be a good fit and ac actually could, uh, could help some of the startups that we hear today on their road to success. We move on now to our second startup of the competition. And this is Robert Ilias from Croatia, right here in Croatia with Identium, Robert. I can feel him coming, he's coming through any second now. Hi yeah. everyone, I'm Robert representing the Identium team. So this is how it looks when banks invest in mass infrastructure. Duplicated machines doing pretty much the same thing. Why isn't there a single ATM or a single POS device which then sends the transactions to the issuing banks? Now this problem is mostly solved and infrastructure is unified. But even now there are cases where it is not. Now banks are in the early stages of digitalization and it seems like they are going to do the same expensive mistake again. Instead of a joint effort, each of them is investing separately into digital onboarding technology. The same is happening outside of banking sector as well. This is of course a money burner for each of the banks. When banks compete with investing in mass infrastructure, it is of course great for technology providers, 
but it is bad for banks and their budgets. What we believe a solution for this is a single central federated identity which all the banks and other companies as well consume via simple API. So what we provide is a single digital identity for end users, citizens of Europe, which banks can use through a simple API interface. Our APIs provide the following functionalities. Identity verifications through either cell phone boarding process or fast track video call. Frictionless EIDAS compliance certificate issuing and document signing, two-factor or even three-factor authentication by using advanced face biometrics, and extracting external financial data via PSD2 bank interfaces throughout Europe. We provide B2B APIs for both web interface or for native mobile applications. Our APIs are fully digital, simple to implement, fully compliant with EU regulation, most notably Anti-Money Laundry 5 and GDPR, and customizable for each client. And we guarantee a 60% lower total cost of ownership with our services. Who needs Identium? Well, pretty much everyone. Every business that wants to digitally transform their channel towards the end user for sure. Regarding traction, we are post revenue, we have three clients and four more are close to signing a deal. In B2C, we have more than 10,000 profiles in Croatia and we will be expanding to Slovenia and Spain very soon. Regarding our milestones, about half a year ago, we got license from Croatian National Bank as EU-wide PSD2 account information service provider. We reached 10,000 us users in Croatia last month we will any day now sign a second partnership with financial agency, locally known as FINA, to become an EIDAS certification registration authority, and we will soon expand outside Croatia. We will soon reach 15,000 euros monthly recurring revenue, and we have a big digitalization contract close in our sales pipeline. We will also launch B2C Identium Now portal for end users, citizens, mid-2021. B2B market for our service is huge. It is three quarters either not digitalized or digitalized poorly. In B2C, there are practically no similar services and we are the market creators. There are three companies that are kind of doing the similar thing, but our value proposition is very unique and hard to compare. We are fully compliant with all EU regulation and with some global ISO technical biometric security standards as well. Our B2C model is freemium and our B2B model is standard software as a service. We believe that the timing is perfect because young people don't want to sign any papers, COVID is making everyone speed up their digitalization efforts and the European Commission is proclaiming that the next decade will be the decade of digitalization and electronic identity. As for the cooperation, we can fully digitalize the bank's process of opening current accounts, giving cash loans, opening deposit accounts for people that are not previous bank customers. We are a team of five, soon six full-timers, professionals, highly experienced in KYC, identity, and personal data. All of us have worked for large European fintechs, and most of us have worked in mainstream banking as well. Please join our effort to truly digitalize the society and make people trust each other in the digital world. Thank you. Fantastic. There we are. Identity and Robert Ilias from Croatia. Right. Once again, we jump back to our jury members and uh, let's hear what they feel about what they've just heard. We'll jump, jump straight back to our jury members and Robert as well. There we are. Hi, everyone. Okay. I can start. Okay. So uh, uh, we arrived and uh, we are already using a solution for the client onboarding for the new bank clients and I saw it on the list of your competitors so you you know it's part of your landscape it's it's called ID now and it's also based on a fast track video call and uh, and we use it for already more than a year and we're quite happy how the system function and what are the results so what will be 
the reason and this additional value proposition from your side to replace existing uh, solutions. So could we, could we hear more about your uniqueness and, and, and these differences to, to existing solutions on the market? I can give you a very short answer and a little bit longer answer. The very short answer is document signing. Uh, that means that a longer answer is that means that unlike ID now in the process of onboarding, we also issue a digital certificate to the end user who can then sign the, any document in the same process. So basically, after you onboard it, you just onboard him on her or her, you just push a PDF to him and he can sign it in the same process frictionlessly. The other thing is that uh, the part of our process is also the uh, potential gathering of his financial data from the other bank because of the PSD2 license that we have. So we can also pull the financial data based on which either we or you can do the scoring for the credit loan. And it, it boils down to that you just have an extremely frictionless process for his onboarding, especially in the case of cash loans. Okay, thank you. And as we mentioned, the uh, idea now in that uh, this is, uh, let's say, a different use case. Uh, what would you bring additionally if we, for example, implement the digital signing of the documents of the PDS, PDFs? What is your differentiator between the, let's say, current implementation with the ID now and your solution? So uh, regarding ID now, you basically don't have uh, document signing at all. You need a separate provider to do it and in order to get a digital certificate if you are using qualified certificates which you probably are but you sh that's not you necessary but you probably are that means that you need to have a video call center as well which is an extreme uh, uh, degradation of, uh, of of conversion because of I mean, because you need to have agents which are 24-7 available for the video call to be able to issue the digital certificate. In our case, all of that is frictionless, so we are ID now plus certificates plus PSD2 data plus some other fancy things which are maybe too deep to drill down into right now. And what is the average, let's say, handling time of a customer for the identification in your process? It really depends on uh, the choice of the bank. If the bank wants qualified certificates, then it's less than eight minutes. The majority of that gets eaten up by the video call, but our video call is uh, different than all the others. It's a fast track and, and much, much quicker. But if you are happy enough with unqualified certificates, which is legally good enough, uh, then it's uh, approximately two minutes because it's self onboarding technology then. There is no life agent in the process. I may ask a similar question as before. So what's your sustainable competitive advantage? Like you listed on that sheet quite a few competitors. Um, so, you know, how, how are you not going to be copied or compete with someone who has more money uh, potentially to do the same thing? Well, basically, uh, I mean, we, I, we just showed you on the presentation the short list, the, the total list is more than 100 uh, companies doing pretty much the same thing, because if you encapsulate KYC and personal data and everything into the definition of what we do, then you have more than 100 companies doing the similar thing. But if you try to compare the, and find the companies that actually issue digital identities to people, which is our core proposition, is that citizens get Identium ID card, then you have only three companies that are kind of doing this in, in some way. And all of us are more or less in a similar stage, but we have some advantages that they do not, uh, while everything they have, we have as well. So basically it is all only just three companies potentially very me from germany is i would say our biggest com biggest competitor uh their their advantage is that they have started maybe a year earlier than we but their biggest disadvantage is that they are owned by large german companies which are now focusing on themselves and uh, they are becoming like an extended it department from these companies which means that they don't have enough power to truly be independent and grab the European market. This is completely new. There are no players around it, big players, European players or even global players, because the area of digital identity as such is only now being defined, roughly defined by European Commission. This is much different than KYC onboarding and, you know, okay, so for you it seems like it's uh, quick to market 
kind of a game. You need to raise money and go quickly and grab the territory, grab the market share. Exactly. It's the it's the only stra only viable strategy if the, if we want to be number one in the world. So, uh, apart from of course having the technology ready, uh, we are also having uh, we are also heavily working on preparing a B two C or actually it's a C two C solution where one citizen will be able to identify other citizen remotely and will be able to sign a PDF which will be legally valid throughout the European Union, Union without any integration with anything whatsoever with uh, extremely simple user experience on the web. So we are going to you know, push these solutions to any citizen in Europe that you know, wants to identify any other citizen in Europe on the other part of Europe or even world, and it, the part of that solution is also going to be the potentiality to check the financial uh, data as well. So you are going to be able to check if a person in Finland is the true owner of his IBAN number and what is his average three-month salary on, on his current account for any transactions that might happen between you guys in the future. If I may uh, jump in with a question, hi Robert. Uh, uh... So maybe a question related to the previous ones. Uh, uh, can you please share your business model or pricing model? Is there any difference uh, uh, against the competition? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, since we are an identity provider, we are drastically cheaper than anybody else. That means that uh, if you go with Identium in, in, a, in, in our wishful scenario, where we open up the identities to other companies as well, then you will save at least 60% or that's a guarantee or more than if you integrate any other technologies. If you want to go with Identium as a white label solution, that means that that's also doable. So we remove anything about Identium. We are just a pure white label. We don't like it, but we can do it. But then it is just cheaper. It is not drastically cheaper. It is just cheap. Thanks. Yes, please. Thank you, Robert. My question would be, I saw in the presentation that, you know, via camera, you check the, the person. My question would be, how do you compare it with any kind of legal document, like an ID or passport? Yeah, basically, if you do it and, and how you do it. Yeah, sure. So uh, we, we, we scan the ID document via the camera. This is a self onboarding process, which the user does by him or herself. So we, we take a picture, we, uh, re, re, we get all the information by uh, machine learning OCR, which is quick and frictionless. And on, as a second step, we also do a hologram, uh, hologram detection, which is a uh, human assisted machine learning, which uh, basically searches for the hologram on the ID card or any other document and to make sure that it is not a fake. And of course, after that, the typical liveness, where we check that the person using the mobile phone is the same person that is on the ID card. That, that's very, very, very important. It should be resilient to masks and, and anything else. And, and it is, and it is. It is the prob it's it's uh, not our solution, of course. Not everything is our solution. It is from our sub-provider, sub which is number one in the world. So that means that basically you check if the card is fake or real, and if it's the same person, but the card itself, you would not compare with any kind of, you know, government data bank that this is the... Oh, we would. Number. We would. It depends on the country. You know, we can do what we can do. For example, in Croatia, we can do it uh, a bit like, you know, maybe hacking it, I would say, but we can do it. So we can check it. I mean, legally, of course, we can check we can check the basic data if it matches the one from the government sources. For example, Bulgaria is a perfect case where you can uh, cross-verify pretty much everything from the government data database and in other countries it is really a country by country specific case so yes we we also do the external checks as well wherever possible and that wraps up that wraps up that uh, our session for the second startup robert thank you so much fantastic we'll thank see you. We'll see Thank your you, fate, what happens a little bit later on when we find out who the actual winner is of this competition. Uh, we move on now to our third startup. So first we heard from the winner of the Serbia competition. Robert is the winner of the Croatian competition. We're going to hear now the winner of the Bosnian Herzegovina and Montenegro competition. And from Montenegro, Nebojša Nedic with Bobot. I think Nebojša is coming through right now. Coming. Hi everyone, my name is Nebojš. 
Together with two of my friends, we are working on the platform for companies and salespeople. Companies will use the platform to calculate and pay bonus to their sales employees, while salespeople will have public profiles that they can share with others. Today, most of the companies use Excel to calculate bonus. This is quite complex, it's time consuming, and most impo importantly, it lacks transparency. The key issue here is that bonus, bonuses are available only at the end of the period, which practically puts the companies in a situation that they cannot, during this period, create competition, ranking lists, and so on. Further, if they would like to hire some new sales employees, they can do this only using traditional hiring process. Uh, in our case, companies will simply create incentive strategies, apply them to sales data, and then our platform will calculate and pay bonus to their sales employees. And now this is the part where cooperation with Raiffeisen Bank would be beneficial, I believe, for both sides, as we would like to integrate our platform and, uh, with Raiffeisen, and in that way provide even more value for the customers. Uh, what you see here is our application. On mobile screens, you can see the public profile of the salesperson with their reputation and relevance. And this is actually the way how companies can later search for the best salespeople on the network. Unlike our competitors that are uh, focused on delivering value only to companies, in our case, we believe that it is very important to deliver value both for companies and salespeople, as this is the only way how we can fully engage the salespeople into this process. The point here is that uh, it is the personal interest of the salesperson that they sell more because in that way they are growing their public profile, which then as effect also is good for the companies at the same time. Um, regarding the market, our total addressable market is quite big as according to different research in developed countries, more than 70% of the companies are using, are paying bonus to their sales employees. In Western Balkan region, this number is significantly lower. For example, in Croatia, it's about 35%. Now, we talked to several companies from different industries, and we wanted to hear them uh, how they are doing this and uh, what do they feel about a solution like this. So what we find out is that all of these companies who were actually uh, paying bonus to their employees uh, were using Excel to do this, and all of them wanted to change this practice as they really didn't like it and it was uh, too complex to them, uh, for them. Uh, regarding the, the opportunity, so once we integrate our platform with the Raiffeisen Bank, uh, uh, practically all of our customers will become uh, Raiffeisen customers as well. So let's take the example of this insurance company that we talked to. So once they start using our platform, actually it will be their best interest to open the account in Raiffeisen Bank in case they, do, they don't already have it, but also at the same time it will be their best interest to invite their sales employees to open the account in Raiffeisen Bank, because in that way, they will get the most value from this process and they will decrease their costs. Now, our business model is quite simple. We have three parts there. So uh, we are going to charge monthly subscription fee for the companies that are using uh, our platform to calculate and pay bonus to their employees. Uh, again, when we talk to these companies, we find out that smaller companies uh, with around uh, six to 10 sales employees they were uh, spending around eight hours per month to execute this process, but bigger companies with around 100 sales employees, they actually needed uh, six days to, to, to do this, to collect data from different sources, process this data, and then execute these payments. Uh, further, when network part of the company, uh, of the platform is developed, we are going to offer tokens to companies to search the platform for the best sales employees, but also we are going to offer platform ads for the companies that would like to stand out from the crowd, and also for third parties that would like to offer their services on our platform, for example, training for the salespeople. Uh, at the end, a little bit about us. I have Master of Computer Science degree in Computer Vision field. I have 18 years of experience in banking industry. Before this uh, uh, last four years there, I was working as executive director for retail and SME business where among other things, I was managing a team of 170 sales employees. And some ideas that, that we are talking about here are coming from that part when, when I was actually doing this job. Mariana has 12 years in banking industry. Uh, she has mathematics and computer science degree. Her areas of expertise are product development, business process design, electronic channels, and she was develop developing software for the core system of the bank. Nina is coming from hospitality industry. She is a professor on Canadian Faculty of Hospitality Management on courses like customer service and sales management. She has 15 years of business experience and she was managing high class resorts. Uh, all three of us are very well known to each other and we are coming from the companies that were using Excel to calculate bonds. 
So thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward for your questions. So there we have it. There we have it. Uh, Neboisha with our third picture of the session of the competition, Bobot. Again, we jump back to our jury members, and let's hear what they feel about what they've just heard. Jury members? Hi. So, yeah. Go first. Thank you for presentation, Neboisha. Really well done. Uh, one thing that wasn't covered is competition. I saw in the material that you identified Salesforce as the main competitor. Could you please explain what's the difference, what's your advantage, and how are you going to fight them? Yes, yeah, so uh, obviously, of course, we have competition. And uh, the key difference here is that all of these companies are focused, all of these providers, software providers, are focused on companies alone. So they don't really provide any value for the salespeople. So the salespeople are employees wherever they are working, and they are doing this job, and that's it. But what we wanted to change here is, is to create the environment where salespeople also have the interest to sell more, not only because of the money that they are getting from the company, but because in that way they are growing their reputation and relevance, meaning what products they are selling and so on. And in that way, uh, this, is, this is becoming the interest of the salesperson to sell more, other than the financial interest, obviously. So this is, this is a big difference, and then this network part of the platform, how we call it, then can actually change the way, uh, uh, can, can literally speed up the whole, whole sales process uh, for the companies that are working there. Okay, so if we, if we say that in Raiffeisen we're not a company who is using Excel for the variable uh, performance calculation, we use uh, banking software, which is uh, highly automatized. Uh, this additional uh, value proposition that you're offering beyond that, do you think this is enough that company like Raiffeisen will switch to your uh, solution? Uh, so, so let's, uh, so you know, Raiffeisen is a bank, but let's talk about, uh, because you already have the infrastructure to execute payments and everything, because this is practically the bank, right? But let's talk about some other company that is, that doesn't have the, the infrastructure, like any, any other, like these insurance companies, or I don't know, some marketing agency that we talk, that they have around 100 sales employees. So, you know, for them, they are processing this data, and this is actually quite complex for them. And uh, when they process this data, then on top of that, they have to execute the payments as well. And then they can do it in several ways. They can export it to the file, send it to the bank, execute these payments, and so on. So what we are proposing to them for these companies is that literally on one click, so they define the strategy, and they uh, literally with one click uh, perform all these tasks all together. And then it's a question whether the company, uh, for example, this insurance company, whether they would switch to Raiffeisen and say, listen, open the account, let's open the account in Raiffeisen because that's, that's the way how we are going to make these payments to our sales employees practically flawlessly without any effort. So this is the one part. And the second part is uh, once they are part of the network, then uh, when I was doing this job, for me, it was really hard to find new sales, uh, new sales people. I mean, we were doing this, this using this traditional process. We simply announce the advertisement, then we, we look for the employees. With our platform, we can actually search based on their reputation. And this can really significantly show, shorten the time, decrease the cost, and can put us in a very good position, especially the companies who are, let's say, preferable employees, employers. Because, you know, everybody would like to work for them. So this, the whole environment, we are creating this competition for the employees as well. Like, uh, employers has to work uh, hard with their employees to create, to save the best people, if you, if, if you understood the, the, this detail. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And you, if I get it, you are then really creating a freelance platform for the salespersons, so that I, as a person, can go to the platform and really sell anything that is there. Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the consequences, so we are not doing this in this phase. So in our phase where we are right now, this is not the interest, that, this is not something that we are pursuing right now. But one of the consequences is you are right, because what can happen is that as more and more salespeople is present on the network, for, and that number can grow really fast, because, for example, just several companies that we talk to, they have all of them were having like 100 sales employees. 
so we can really for the specific region we can really reach really big numbers of salespeople that are present on the network and once that happens then uh, it's a, it's a natural consequence uh, we can uh, the companies can then search for these people and and start uh, offering them the contracts to to practically sell their products as well Uh, I would also have a question, mm -hmm. um, uh, I would understand that, you know, when it comes to bonus payment, performance, anything like this, it's rather confidential data, right? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what's your kind of model of, of, of using the tool? Is it on-premise or cloud or how do you deal with that confidential data? Thank uh, so that, uh, thank you, thank you. So that really depends on the company. So where we are implementing. So it can, uh, it can go any, it's kind of a technical thing. So. Uh, some companies will prefer data to be present only on the uh, on their premises and in that way we will have to install the certain environment with them but a lot of companies will not have a problem with this and they will use our cloud solution so what we what we how we organize it is that we have this cloud solution that will be useful for probably smaller medium companies while the banks will probably opt for uh, implementing the, the 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 data part of the environment locally so they don't kind of a risk it to, to be present anywhere else. So it's really up to the implementation. It's it's not, it depends on the on the wish of the company, but both are possible. Got another, another three minutes left. So another, uh, perhaps a, a two more questions. No? I would have yeah. a question maybe regarding the traction, if you can uh, drill down. So what's the, Kind of sales so far and what's your strategy to expand to larger scale uh, so uh, for us uh, so for us it's really important this cooperation with the banks uh, i mean we had lots of ideas how we can do this but i think that the most optimal solution is simply to do it with the partnership with the bank because in that way we will immediately be exposed to a large number of customers so this is kind of a uh, the, the way how we would like to approach this in the in the early stage uh, right now we are we uh, we are in the final phase practically of our product and we are talking to we have i don't know six seven companies that are waiting for us practically to offer them this solution so this is this is where we are at this moment okay what would be the critical success factor or, or, or number of clients uh, in order for this case to, to be successful uh, Did you made any calculation or so? Uh, so uh, listen, it's uh, we didn't really go into this this direction. Meaning, like, what is the the minimum part? We were more more interested in how much we can reach or what is the potential for the for the product and everything. So, I can tell you about this. So, so in in our region, only Western Balkans, we have around four hundred thousand companies together, and. Uh, if you take around 20% that are paying bonus to their employees right now at this moment, so I'm not talking about like uh, uh, Western, Western Europe or something where there is even around 70%, then our potential is really huge, especially when we bring in the salespeople on the network as well. So this is, this is kind of a driving force for us, not, not, uh, not really uh, this minimal, as, especially because our cost is really quite low, so we don't have any any kind of big cost or anything. So it's it's quite simple for us to, to do this. Okay, I think I think that wraps up our our, our last interrogation of our third startup pitch. So Nebosha, thank you so much. And uh, we'll hear very shortly, a little bit later on, uh, your fate and the fate of the other startup pitches as well. So that wraps up the uh, the pitching competition. We've had three big three very diverse, big ideas. It's very difficult for, I'm sure, the jury members to decide who's going to walk away a winner. And I'm sure quite tough for you as well. But listen, we'd love to hear what you think. So in the chat uh, areas, in the chat box, in the areas where you're watching online, let us know how you feel. Let us know who you feel should walk away a winner. All that leaves me now to say is thank you so much to our jury members. Marika here on stage with me now. Neboisha, Kenan. 
Petar, Istvan, and Maya. Thank you so much for being our jury members. They will now walk away. They will go off somewhere and, and hide away for, for a, a, a little while and discuss, debate, and come up with the winning startup of this competition. We're here, who the winner is, on this stage at 2 o'clock sharp. So 2 o'clock, back here to find out who that winner is. All that leaves me now to say is thank you so much, Marco, and uh, we will carry on on to our next we session. Thank you so much. We have a good job ahead of us.